Hello and welcome to another episode of How To Music. Actually, it's the first episode. Anyways, today we are trying to recreate Headhunter's signature super saw chord lead synth, whatever you want to call it. For those of you who know Headhunter's, you will definitely know what I mean. In particular, we're gonna look at his song Orange Heart, which came out in 2019 and was a great success in the hardstyle scene. So Headhunters, for those of you who don't know him, he's a great producer and DJ who recently made a short adventure into the great world of EDM just to return back to his origin, the hardstyle scene, where he's basically a living legend. So first, this is the original song we are talking about. And this is what we are going to build today. Okay, what do we use for this synth? We use Ableton, Silent, Valhalla Vintage Verb, Camel Crusher, Isotope Ozone, some EQs, some compressors, a computer, a mouse and coffee. My name is Chris C. Let's get started. To the chords! So we start with an A major. Next up a minor. Well, then we have G major and you can, if you want, you can play a G sus4. Next a D major over F sharp, so regular D major chord and the bass tone plays F sharp. And then a D minor over F and uh, back to A minor. Again, F, but a regular F chord, and E major. And then, of course, back to the beginning, A major. Okay, now I will play the melody for you. Um, I will not go into detail uh, to, for the melody, because you can look it up in the MIDI, and you can download the MIDI. The link is in the description, you can download it for free, and yes. So I will play the melody now for you. Beautiful. All right, let's start with the bass. All right, so first of all, you should know um, the all the silent presets you need. I put them into one silent bank, and the download link is in the description. You can download it for free. So I will not go into detail about the silent settings. Instead, what this really is is to show you uh, the mixing, the layering, audio effects, and all this kind of stuff. So with that said, let's start with the bass. So the bass is just playing the obviously the bass notes A, G, F sharp, F, A, F, E. And it has just one silent instance. So in our silent bank, it's called number one bass. Uh, without audio effects, it sounds like this. And with the audio effects, so what's going on there? Nothing really exciting, just an equalizer. Get rid of some of the very low end because um, in the original, in this in this hook section, in this break section, there is not really a, really a sub bass, so we don't need that basically. I also got rid of this very top end because this just hurts and we need that space for the lead. So, and also some of the mids. So next, um, the Camel Crusher to have some more distortion because the hook line in, in this in orange heart is very distorted. So I have distortion basically on every channel almost. 
So just a little bit because the Camel Crusher is really effective. So if you go here to clear preset and then just a little tube and mech to give it a little punch. Push it a little bit. All right, uh, uh, compressor, because we don't need dynamic. Who needs dynamics, right? And a sidechain compression. We will talk about that in detail later, but basically um, the input channel for the sidechain compression on the bass are the chord chops. So, so the bass is only played when the chord chops are not played, basically. All right, that's pretty much it for the bass. Next, uh, we go to the pad sound. Also, just one silent instance in our silent bank, it's called number seven pad. If we look at the MIDI, these are exactly those chords I played earlier on the piano. Don't worry, the uh, MIDI files are also in the download link in the description. So we don't need to go through these. Uh, you basically see it here. You can stop the video right here. Okay. Um, bu 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 without audio effects, it sounds like this. With audio effects, yeah, I cut um, in the first EQ, I cut very much of the low end because it's covered by our bass um, compressor. Again, who needs dynamics? And some little isotope ozone plugin here to give it more wideness. It's not really necessary, it's just some little details. So without the isotope and with the isotope, I don't know if you can even hear it on your headphones or whatever you're listening on. And in the end, the same or almost the same sidechain compression as we had in the bass. So those, if we play those two at the same time. They have the same sidechain compression going on. And I mentioned earlier the input for the sidechain compression are the chord chops or is the chord chops track so let's go to the chord chops track so if we play now the bass and this chord chops so you have all always when the chord chops are not played then the bass comes in and yeah sounds pretty nice i think so for the uh, chord chops we have two um, silent instances layer the first one very detuned and distorted the second one has much wide noise in it and this for the top end so audio effects again we have an EQ uh, we cut the low end and we also get got rid of some high frequencies to um, to have more room for the for the actual lead sound another compressor and I also have here an isotope ozone for to give it some to give the sound a little more space whiteness all right then let's get to the fun part the lead sound for the MIDI of the lead sound there are some tricks in here for, ex oops, for example this one just added a few notes here here is also a kind of ghost note and then we have this one Bam. And for that, I automated the pitch. So if you turn on the envelopes inside the MIDI track, you can automate the pitch. I think it should also be saved in the in the MIDI file, which you can download. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay, so this sound consists of three silent instances layered on top of each other. We have first in our silent bank, it's called lead one, lead two, and lead, you guessed it, three. All right, so the first one, yep, first one, this is actually the main one. Second one and the third one and together. Okay, so for the first one, we have. I was a little um, confused. I mean, not confused. I was a little. I was almost desperate because the sound was was similar, pretty similar, but there was missing something, and there's still missing something, and. And that is, and that is all this distortion. I don't really know what plugins Headhunters uses for distortion, but yeah, I just did what I could to make it sound similar. So I put their accelerator first. And M. A camel crusher again just a little also the compression on the camel crusher is, is switched on here and then EQ because when you put so much distortion on the sound you have you have many frequencies that just hurt in your ear so you have to get rid of them and OTT um, multiband dynamics plugin with the OTT preset so if you have if you search in the multiband dynamics um, presets you have this OTT stands for over the top I'm not sure anyways also to get works basically like a compressor but on the different frequency ranges so you have a separate compression for the low end, the mid, and the top. And uh, another camel crusher, which is switched off, so we just delete that. A simple compressor and an ozone instance. Again, for the wideness, more space, especially for the top end. And a final EQ. To get rid of the frequencies we don't need. Actually, I almost only use EQs to get rid of frequencies because this way they are much more effective. When you push frequencies, um, you, when you push frequencies, they can interfere with other tracks, and it's always a good idea first to get rid of bad frequencies instead of pushing pushing frequencies. So the second sound. The lead two. We have a camel crusher in the beginning and a cue. Uh, yeah, that's it for the sound. The rest is for all the sounds. We have some switched off plugins. We can delete that. Another EQ. Yeah, we have only this EQ. We don't have any distortion because we have so much distortion already going on in this silent preset. So what I came up with to try to match Headhunter's distortion, uh, the best way was um, in the, directly in the silent plugin and the distortion tab, there is this decimate type and I think this sounded more, most similar of all those distortion types. All right, that's basically it for the for the lead sound. So we have all our components for the hook line, but it's pretty still pretty dry because we have no reverb. And for this, this is a trick I use all the time for this super sources 
um, I make all the all the components of the super saw except for the base. I don't want reverb on the base. So all the components of the super saw synth that need reverb, I put them into a group. And then I make an audio effect rack, I think it's called. And I just have one chain here, one track. It's just the, the dry signal. I don't need that. And then I have one separate track, which is just responsible for the reverb. And for the reverb, I think also Headhunters uses Valhalla Vintage Verb. I think he mentioned it in an interview once. I really like this plugin. So, and I turned here the mix all the way up to 100% because this channel is only responsible for the for the reverb. The channel, the reverb channel alone sounds like nothing really. But yeah, together with 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 our dry channel Suddenly it's pretty huge. And what's interesting about this reverb channel, well, I put a compressor on it. Actually, two com ah, two compressors. No, the first compressor, yeah. It's again a sidechain uh, compression. The input for this sidechain compression is the lead. So whenever the lead is played, I don't want the reverb to play too much. So the lead is really punching and is present. And only when the lead is not in the in the breaks in, in, be, in between those those lead parts, I want the reverb really to shine. And I also put some um, EQ on the, in this reverb. And then I figured I also need some kind of delay, so I made a third channel on this group called delay, and it's just playing. The delay. Also with a little reverb because otherwise it would sound too dry. So we have three different channels on the group. The dry, uh, the reverb and the delay. So together the whole group sounds like this. Then when we add the bass. Pretty good. And then we have some audio effects here, like pardon me, a white noise, an impact sound, and a hard style kick. I think all these um, audio effects are from the Cashmere sample pack, Sounds of Cashmere Volume 3, I think, which is one of the best sample packs out there. So I really um, can recommend you the Cashmere sample packs for EDM and, and stuff like that. Perfect. And also I have a co choir, just a, a female voice. Because on the, on the original, the, I, I heard like, I thought it was a voice, so I just added this, this one note. It's, I think it's a, an A, yeah on top of it and if we if we look at the automation the it's just fading out so when we play all everything at once i hope i didn't forget to activate anything right now but just let's listen to it Okay, before we compare that to the original, let's turn on an isotope ozone instance on the master track. 
to have a little bit of mastering going on here. Otherwise, it wouldn't be fair to compare to the original, which is also mastered pretty good. So, first, the original. But I have to turn off our mastering. Still pretty loud. Then our thing here. Yeah, not perfect, but pretty close, I think. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to my channel for more videos. Also, let me know in the comments which songs or sounds I should do next. And until then, stay safe and make some music. Thank <laughs> you.